I'm pleased to introduce Danielle McDonald. She's an assistant professor at the School of Nursing, Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Her research focuses on understanding the experiences of global birthing care. Specifically, she is interested in collaboration, midwifery and nursing, birthing people and their families. Dr. McDonald has experience teaching nursing in culturally complex contexts, most recently in the Mid Middle East. She is thrilled to be back in Canada and looks forward to creating inclusive relationships to collaborate and learn about the experiences of birthing care globally. Thank you, Tanya, for that introduction. Um, it's really, I'm really delighted to be here today, and uh, I'd like to wish everyone on the call, first and foremost, a very happy International uh, Day of the Midwife. This is uh, 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 very exciting to, to be um, sharing this work with all of you today. So I'd like to just start um, by, oops, second here, presenter view. Oh. All right, there we go. There. Um, I'd like to just do a land acknowledgement. So I'm actually in Kingston, Ontario in Canada and Queen's University where I work um, is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. And it's really important to recognize uh, the land of, of um, these this territory that I'm on. I'd also like to recognize Mi'kma'ki, which is where I actually did the research and um, where I'm originally from. So I have a, a deep, deep gratitude for that part of Canada as well. So just to begin, just to sort of touch so that you know a little bit about who I am, and I know Tanya has has uh, started um, this off um, and telling you a bit about me, but uh, I've had a lifelong interest in midwifery and global birthing care experiences. Uh, since I was a little girl, I was always the one that was looking for the newborns and the new moms and interested in breastfeeding. Um, and that interest and passion has followed me through my career. Um, I'm a registered nurse and, and, uh, and definitely a fierce uh, advocate for midwifery uh, here in Canada and globally. I definitely situate myself as a feminist. I'm originally from Nova Scotia. I finished my PhD in 2019, and this is the, uh, the research that I did uh, to complete that. And I was delighted to um, join Queen's University School of Nursing this past September. Uh, and just to let you know, my program of research really looks at global birthing care experiences. And specifically, when we're thinking about that as they relate to midwifery and nursing, birthing people and collaboration. Okay, so a bit about the background for this work. Um, here in Canada, midwifery is a provincially regulated uh, profession, and this has really led to uh, different practice arrangements in the different provinces. Um, and so we know that the integration of midwifery into existing perinatal services in Canada hasn't always been smooth. And we know also that um, there are historic sort of overlappings of, of skills and roles and identities when we're talking about nurses and midwives and nurse midwives. And that's, that's specific to Canada, but it, it, we can also see that globally as well. Um, these historic tensions specifically have been documented in Canada in, in provinces of Ontario and Alberta, more recently in Nova Scotia and British Columbia. Um, and we can see that this this overlapping of these skills and roles and identities um, have really, you know, we can see that reflected in different scopes of practice, different educational pathways and models of practice for midwives and perinatal nurses globally. In 2015, I conducted a systematic review and I looked at the experiences of collaboration between midwives and nurses. And I was specifically looking at qualitative um, research that had been done about this. And there wasn't much. There were five studies total that I was able to find, three of which were um, Canadian studies. And really the conclusion from this uh, review was that we needed to know more about collaboration between midwives and nurses in a variety of clinical practice contexts. 
So this brings us to Nova Scotia. Um, Nova Scotia is a, a province um, in Canada. Midwifery was regulated there in 2009. So it's, midwifery is a relatively new sort of regulated profession in that province. Um, at the time of this study, there were seven practicing uh, registered midwives. And there are currently now 17 midwives that are filling uh, 16 full-time positions. Um, there are three model sites. They are the original three model sites that were set up when midwifery was initially regulated. So the services have not extended beyond those three particular sites. And there's just one um, little error here on the model sites. And that was that during the time of data collection, it was actually the Bridgewater site that was suspended. Um, but it's important to know that two of these sites are rural and one is urban. Um, in Nova Scotia, we have registered nurses that are providing perinatal care and they're providing it antenatally, interpartum and postpartum. Um, we also have uh, registered nurses who are attending home births as second attendants, where they actually go and support uh, the midwives and birthing uh, people and their families uh, in a second attendant role. Um, and it's at the time of the study, the College of Registered Nurses of Nova Scotia, it's, it's now changed to a different name, but um, they were really clear to highlight the distinction between nurses and midwives and, and had two um, uh, policies regarding that that really outlined the responsibilities and expectations for registered nurses who may um, hold a nursing license to practice and a midwifery uh, license to practice, but also what the expectations were for nurses um, who were working as registered or as second attendants at home births. So the study purpose was really to explore collaboration between midwives and nurses in Nova Scotia. And I was really interested in understanding how midwives and nurses collaborate during perinatal health care in Nova Scotia. So I used uh, um, feminist post-structuralism as the theoretical perspective. Um, fe the feminism piece really allowed me to attend to um, power dynamics that um, are related to gender and, and sort of thinking about uh, you know, patriarchy and what role that has had um, in this, in, as it related to the research question. Um, and then post-structuralism really allowed me to, to challenge what had been taken for granted with our, um, you know, this idea that thoughts and experiences and language have plural meanings um, and mean different things for different people. Um, and so sort of recognizing what had the power of discourse um, and how different discourses can really act as meeting points for power and knowledge. So together, combining feminism and post-structuralism really provided a lens to explore power relations and the role that gender and discourses play in those power relations as they related to collaboration between midwives and nurses. I used a case study methodology um, and really uh, I used what Stake refers to as an instrumental case. And so the idea here was that I was using the case um, to facilitate a really in-depth understanding um, of that specific case in order to understand the phenomenon um, beyond it. So I was using Nova Scotia, the case of, of midwives and nurses collaborating in Nova Scotia to understand what that might look like um, beyond that specific um, case. Uh, case study is really context specific and really was a great methodology to choose to, to create a deep understanding of this phenomena. It's great for answering how and why questions and, um, and this idea of binding the case of really, um, it was a way of defining the case to create these boundaries around the case and you can use geography or time or activity. So in this specific um, study, I used the geographic boundaries of Nova Scotia. So the setting, I've touched on this a little bit before, but essentially the setting, the, the boundary of the case was Nova Scotia. So I was, I was speaking to participants at the three model sites, Nanaganish, Bridgewater, and Halifax. At the time, there was uh, one, and there continues to be one health authority, and, um, and then also the IWK Health Center, which is a tertiary um, healthcare center for um, birthing people and children. Um, and it has its own sort of jurisdiction, but works in collaboration with the health authority. At the time, there were nine midwifery positions. 
There were five positions at the IWK, two at in Antigonish, and Bridgewater had two. And there were seven practicing uh, midwives during the data collection. And at the time, there were registered nurse second attendants for home births at all three sites. The other thing, as I mentioned before, was that one of the sites, that is the Bridgewater site, um, the services were suspended, and that happened right at the beginning of the recruitment. Um, and so, so things were sort of in flux around the time that I was starting my data collection. I used um, purposeful and snowball strategies to recruit the participants. Um, so the snowball sampling was really um, important because it allowed the participants to share information about the study with other potential um, participants. I used two uh, types of data sources. So the primary source really relied on interviews with all of the participants. And those were face-to-face uh, -face interviews. I had a semi-structured interview guide. Um, they took place in private locations and they ranged from 30 to 90 minutes in length and all the participants signed consent forms. I also used secondary sources, primarily document review, where I looked at 24 documents. Um, most were media reports. I did look at one policy and one was an actual report. Um, and then I did also maintain field notes. Um, to keep track of, of, of what was going on. And then the individual and group discussions, once I had done the preliminary analysis, I shared those findings um, with the participants in keeping with the feminist tenant of, of, of including participants throughout the process. This was the analysis. I used feminist post-structuralist discourse analysis. Um, and I won't go into great depth with this here, um, but just to know that Essentially, um, I looked at, I read and listened to the interviews um, and then identified and named what important issues I found in the transcripts. And within each of those quotations of the issues, I identified the values, beliefs, practices and discourses within that uh, quotation. And then brought together, I also considered concepts of gender and power relations, agency and subject positions, and then aggregated the similar issues together um, to create the sub-themes and the themes. And I'm happy to answer more questions about that uh, later. So the participants, I ended up with 17 participants in total. I actually interviewed 18 participants, but uh, one of the participants, she thought she had been attended at a home birth, at her home birth with a nurse and midwife and, and contacted me after to say that actually it was two midwives that attended her birth. So I had five midwives, six nurses, three mothers, one um, care provider colleague, and three stakeholders. The stakeholders were um, decision makers or, or folks that were in um, administration. And... Um, I had ethical approval from the University of Ottawa, which is where I did my research, where I did my PhD, as well as the two health authorities. Okay, so the findings. So this is the really fun stuff, I think, and the stuff that really kind of gets me excited. Um, and so there were four main, find, main themes, and there were 11 sub-themes. So the main themes were negotiating roles and practices. Every nurse is different. Every midwife is different. Every birth is different. The second was sustaining relationships. The more we can just build relationships with one another. The third theme was reconciling systemic tensions, the medical model and the midwifery model. And then the fourth theme was moving forward, a modern model for nurses and midwives working together. So for the first thing, negotiating roles and practices, one of the things that really stood out um, was how the participants talked about how they constantly negotiated their roles. And this was an ongoing thing that happened when they came together to provide care for birthing people and their families. They also talked about how there was a crossover of skills and practices. And so Chelsea was a midwife and she said it really does cross over quite a bit, like the skill set, like the actual clinical skill set, as well as the supportive care piece. Because typically nurses are doing all the supportive care until a doctor comes in and catches a baby. So with midwives, because we're there, once a client is established in her active labor. Some nurses really enjoy that, that supportive care piece, and aren't sure then what their role is. So I do always try to have a chat with a nurse as we're settling in to say, like, you do what you do, and I'll just follow your vibe and my client's vibe. I'll kind of work around you all. And the other sub theme that uh, was part of this theme was this idea of communication and good anticipate good anticipating. And uh, midwives and, and nurses talked about 
how important it was to have clear, honest communication and 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 how the midwives actually appreciated the nurse's ability to anticipate what their needs may be in terms of the supports they may need, but also what the, what the birthing people and families may need in their care. The second theme had to do with sustaining relationships. And there were three sub themes along with this. So this testing trust, if they did not trust us, they would not sign up. So this idea that um, you know, trust was really intrinsic to uh, specifically nurses uh, working in the role of second attendant at home births, and and but also in the hospital as well. So that 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 trust almost needed to be tested and assured that it was there, um, so that they would work well together. The midwives, depending on nurses, we could not do our job without them. Um, that was that came through and through, um, and was really interesting because um, the, the second attendant birth for nurses attending home births actually helped to support um, the stability of the home birth um, services. And so the midwives really recognized that and that was great. And then needing more opportunities together, they're not the unknown anymore. So Bridget was a nurse and she said, I can tell you things that I think have strengthened it here. It's a more OB program, learning together, not just going to a midwifery course or going to a course on a nursing or going to a course on a physician skills. It's we all sit down at the same classroom and we all learn the same stuff. I think that was huge for collaboration. And I think being in the same facility, working closely in the same unit together makes a huge difference. I think that's a huge strength. And I think playing together, doing social things outside the work. The third main theme was reconciling systemic tensions. And this was really interesting, this first sub theme of the invisibility of collaboration and the best kept secret. And so there was this notion amongst participants that midwives and nurses collaborating was actually sort of invisible and, uh, and, and, and was something to be protected. Florence was a midwife and she said, because the best kept secret, and we all chat about it, is that when you have a, a birth and a nurse and a midwife in the room at the hospital, it's easy because we clean up with them. Like we're all doing the same. There's so much overlap in our roles that we're taking a huge burden off of them with a client that isn't epiduralized usually and would be a lot of work. And then they're taking a huge burden for us. So there was this real sense of protecting this, this collaboration and how well it worked for fear that, that you know, it, it may change. Um, there were the other sub themes with this theme had to do with resisting and accepting institutional expectations. And so there were examples from participants where they were doing both, that there were times that they stood up to those institutional expectations when it didn't support collaboration or the birthing person's needs um, and others when they, they accepted them. And then this idea of the medical approach versus the midwifery approach, um, uh, sort of very recognizing the differences in, in, in what those approaches were and, and, and what the participants had to do to, to kind of come together to collaborate. The final theme was moving forward. And there were two sub themes with this. And uh, the first one was the birthing culture has changed. And so Daisy was a nurse um, and she said, well, I think if it's I think that's a modern midwifery model. If we can have nurses collaborating with midwives and working like, why can't a nurse go to work at a midwifery clinic with them and work with them in their office and see patients? Like we should be doing things like that. I think if we can just change the way that the whole model of care, like that would be ideal. But yeah, I think like we should be working with them and having a modern model for nurses and midwives working together. There was a real interest in working together and creating innovative models that sort of upheld midwifery values. Um, and, uh, you know, the more that, that came both from nurses and midwives that they they had worked on these relationships and valued what each brought to um, the care that they were providing. There was also this sub theme of advocacy um, with allies and advocates and this idea that nurses could really be strong allies and advocates for midwives. There were more of them. They were, um, you know, there, there were larger communities of them, they were everywhere. And in Canada, in Nova Scotia particularly, um, you know, having nurses who were well trusted in communities where perhaps there isn't midwifery services available right now um, was something that, um, you know, was seen to be a, a potential way to, to support sustainable midwifery and the expansion of midwifery services. So in terms of the discussion, it really brought up four kind of main things. So this idea of sustainability, um, you know, we know that sustainability of midwifery is an issue in Canada. 
We've seen it in Nova Scotia. We've seen uh, different practice sites closing for different reasons um, and then opening. We know globally that this is a challenge. We've just had the state of um, the midwifery report come out and you know clearly we're 900,000 uh, midwives short globally. So, so the sustainability is really a challenge. And what this research offers is an idea to think about innovative approaches to delivery, the delivery of midwifery services and how we can really collaborate with one another to, to ensure that that sustainability is supported. Um, the second was this idea of midwives, nurses, and hegemonic medical discourses. And so we know that there are, um, you know, historical and contemporary midwifery discourses, and we know that there are nursing discourses and uh, medical discourses. And often we see a lot of tension when those discourses um, are, you know, come together um, in sort of ways where the, you know, those ideas have been siloed. And so the idea of coming together may feel threatening. And so this idea that, um, you know, this example of midwives and nurses working together um, provides sort of hope for reconciling some of that um, and, and, and sort of calling into the need of making, um, celebrating those opportunities to, um, to acknowledge what is working when collaboration is working well. Um, this also really uh, highlighted sort of this idea of person-centered cultures. And so participants did talk about how the culture was changing. It was person-centered. It was this idea that everybody on that care team was important and that while the focus was rightfully so um, on and, and with and for the birthing person and family, um, there was there was that care and concern and um, interest was extended to the care providers and everybody that was a part of that um, that birth experience. And so this is a really, uh, you know, we talk about woman-centered care, we talk about um, patient-centered care, but this idea of person-centered care where everybody's valued for being part of the team is, is you know, I think something that we need to start thinking about and and, and how we can use that in our collaboration. And then this idea, again, of a new collaborative model of care. It's not to say that this model is perfect. It's a one size fits all. That's certainly not the suggestion, but we know that midwife led models of care have excellent outcomes. We know we need more mid midwives. Um, how can we support that? You know, and I think as a nurse myself, knowing that, um, you know, it can work, gives me hope um, that, you know, we can we can make some change and, and, and really be collaborative and honor those midwifery values. So the recommendations really were um, to explore collaboration between midwives and nurses in other jurisdictions in Canada. Um, we are unique in Canada because we have midwives and nurses that uh, you know, we do have perinatal nurses working and we do have midwives and some of their roles overlap. Midwives are primary care providers in Canada and, and, and nurses are not, but, you know, nurses can support that. But let's see what's, what's happening in collaboration in other jurisdictions. We need to explore how working with midwives is changing nursing beliefs, values and practices. We need to explore the feasibility of a midwife-led and nurse-supported model of low-risk perinatal care. And really, we need to raise the public profile of midwifery, home birth, and collaboration between midwives and nurses amongst the public and also, really importantly, with other healthcare providers. I think we also need to look at educational pathways between nursing education and midwifery education. Uh, are there things we could do to ease entry from one profession to the other? Are there things that we can do to help socialize the professions to each other so that they truly understand uh, what they do and who they are and the values that they're working with? And then we need to look for more opportunities and create more opportunities for midwives and nurses to build professional relationships. When we're concluding, just to say, I think Collaboration between midwives and nurses in Nova Scotia in Nova Scotia is complex. It's ongoing. It's 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 not something um, that sort of is an arrived at part uh, point, but something that needs to be continually worked at. Um, the findings really illustrated that collaboration, for the most part, was working pretty well, um, and this was working well even within a context of systemic challenges. Um, 
this case study really provides a positive example of birthing care that works um, and really, you know, underlying that it's emerging from and within the challenges of building sustainable midwifery services in Nova Scotia. And really it illustrates the great potential for building collaborative teams of midwives and nurses in Nova Scotia, in Canada and really beyond. So just to finish up, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Josephina Toa, who supervised this study and all of the study participants. These are not their real names, these are their pseudonyms. Um, so a big thank you to Annabelle, Bridget, Chelsea, Claire, Colin, Daisy, Elizabeth, Emma, Eve, Florence, Ina, Janet, Jean, Mary, Melissa, Sunny, and Susan, and then as well some funding that I received to do the work. So I thank you very much for your attention and uh, I leave it open to any of your questions or comments. Oh, Cecilia, we always do our best at UBC when we have student applications from Nova Scotia to facilitate learning for those students. We're a long way away, but we know the need of midwives in all of Canada. Thank you, Cecilia. That's wonderful. And I do know we have UBC grads in, the, in, in Nova Scotia, so um, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see that, uh, that you're facilitating that for, for uh, future midwives from Nova Scotia. Thank you. Lorraine, smile to you too, Lorraine. <laughs> I saw that you're from Annapolis Valley, which is, uh, which is exactly where I'm from. So it's lovely to see you here. Are there any other questions or comments? I'm, I'm so curious to know um, if this resonates with folks, um, if this is you know, new in different ways, if, it's, if it reaffirms anything, maybe your, challenge, maybe your experiences have been different or, or similar. Um, Please feel free to jump in. From here in the Southwest Arizona, that felt very salient and very um, much what we need and what we've experienced, like both on the positive side and the negative side of our relationships with nurses and midwifery. So thank you for starting the conversation. Thank you, Tanya. Yes. Yeah. Um, do I need to unmute you? I've got it, thanks. <laughs> this really resonated with me Midwifery in British Columbia had its own college and it was too expensive to maintain that college. And the Ministry of Health said to some of the smaller colleges two years ago that they would need to amalgamate. Nursing welcomed midwifery in a way that medicine didn't. And half of the BC midwives were very worried about aligning with nursing and being able to keep a separate identity. Your work goes a long way in making midwifery comfortable with nursing colleagues. And I thank you for that. Oh, oh gosh. Thank you, Cecilia. I I um I, I had I had come to know that the that the colleges had had come together the nursing and midwifery colleges in in British Columbia and I I you know it's interesting because when you look globally um, that's the case in many places right and and part of that has to do with the the tradition of nurse midwifery we're so um, I think so unique and so um, fortunate to have a clear distinction of midwifery and, and nursing in Canada. And, you know, I understand that it, it, you know, it has been challenging and continues to be challenging for a whole series of reasons. I think those two predominantly female 
um, dominated pr professions, um, you know, between us, we have a lot that in common, um, as long as we pay attention to those distinctions. Um, and, and ultimately, we share very similar goals. I mean, we want healthy um, birthing people and families, we want good outcomes. Um, we have orientations professionally to work in communities, to work with communities, to uh, work in, in hospitals and in homes. I mean, those are similarities that are professional. Uh, and so, you know, coming together, working together, I mean, I see great potential um, in, in being able to, you know, grow midwifery, um, sustainable midwifery in our communities um, by working together and supporting each other, um, you know, and, and I know that's not easy. We're, we're you know, in, in Nova Scotia, we're 12 years in and, you know, have gotten to a, a pretty good place, um, but there's always challenges. I mean, those are three sites. If, if there was a new site to, to be introduced, um, you know, in the future, there may be challenges you know, in establishing some of those relationships and, and trust as well. But I think if, if we're all uh, working, you know, together, working at it, there's great potential. So thank you, Cecilia. I really appreciate your comments. And I see your other one. I agree about mutuality of midwifery and nursing, sometimes working together administratively is a financial reality. Yeah, and sometimes I think those, the, the fin there are financial barriers too, right? And, and you know, I'm certainly, uh, learning more and more about what some of those barriers are to collaboration and and to to to, to being able to freely collaborate. Yeah, thank you. I see there are a few more folks who are typing, so I'll give them a chance to to add their comments. Oh, Rahana, the saying "stronger together" is definitely true. Yeah, I think so. And I, you know, I, for me, it was this research has been really hopeful, and. Um, you know, I, I've certainly, I've certainly been asked. You know, you know, is is this too good to be true? And I mean, nothing's perfect, and and certainly, um, you know, everything is a work in progress. But uh, but I think it's hopeful because I think it demonstrates possibility um, for others, right? And and ways that we can work together. Yeah, Tanya, learning together is a powerful takeaway. Yeah, and I think I was actually having a conversation with a midwife. Um, in the last week or so, and she was preparing uh, a presentation um, uh, to OB uh, uh, residents and, and med students and sort of asked sort of what my thoughts were around what she should focus on and, you know, should I get back to the basics or something specific? And I sort of said, this is your chance to really socialize them to midwifery. What is it about and what do midwives do and what are the values and, you know, grab them now so that they they, you know, can can really um, understand that that midwives are a part of the team and and important, intrinsic to uh, to good outcomes and good teamwork. And uh, so, you know, it's it's not just nursing, but but I think historically we've sort of been positioned with tension between us, and I think it's time to reframe that and uh, and look at how we can how we can look at those similarities and support each other. See, there's more typing, <laughs> right? Bellette is saying nurse midwife is the highest in number in the health workforce and their collaboration will bring great change. Absolutely. And I think more and more we're seeing reports about that. And, you know, certainly our situation with the COVID-19 pandemic has really illuminated how important nurses and midwives are for primary health care um, in, in all its facets. And so, yeah, we make up the most numbers. Um, so how can we work together to really um, advocate for our own professions, each other's professions, and also the families that we're working with? 
Alicia is asking, having nursing students learning from midwives and midwifery student, students learning from registered nurses is a huge part of setting the foundations of, for great working relationships. Yes, Alicia, that's great. And I think I noticed that you're here in Kingston. And, and um, when I arrived here at Queens, I was really excited to see that we actually have um, our nursing students. Uh, there are some of our nursing students are able to have placements with uh, midwives as part of their maternity course in their undergraduate um, uh, nursing program and nurse practitioners. That's right, Alicia. And so, um, so that's really, I was really excited when I found out about that here because I thought that's, that's how we, that's how we establish collaboration. That's how we, um, you know, work together and learn about each other and send, you know, nurses out into the world who know what midwives are and what midwives do and, and, and trust it, um, as an evident, evidence informed, practice. So yeah, that was really exciting. And I, I, I agree with you, Alicia. It's, um, you know, we need to look and look for and create more of those opportunities to learn together for sure. Alicia's saying um, Ontario's midwifery education program also has labor and delivery nursing rotations and NICU nursing as well. Yes. And I actually just was speaking to a midwifery student um, recently and she was telling me that she had had a placement with uh, uh, a nurse uh, labor and delivery nurse and and how much she learned and how much she enjoyed that placement. So yes, absolutely. Thanks, Alicia. Um, Belit is saying in Ethiopia, the midwife and nurse associations are working together to bring a remarkable change. Oh, that's great. Um, what is, do you have any specific examples of what they're doing in Ethiopia, Belit? I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. I'd love to know if there's anything specific that they're doing. Um, you know, it's really interesting. Are there any other questions or comments? It's wonderful to see so many folks from around the world. Um, I'm always curious to know what 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 folks are doing, where they where they live and work, and and what we can learn from each other. So it's great. And certainly feel free if if you have questions or um, you know any comments, please do feel free to send me an email or you can tweet me on Twitter. <laughs> Find me on Twitter. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you more about this work or really um, anything related to, to midwifery and nursing collaboration or birthing experiences. <laughs> I see we have someone typing. We've got a couple of people typing. Give them a second. It takes a minute to. Also, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question directly. Oh, yeah, that would be great, too. Whichever is easiest. Oh, great. Thanks. I look forward to hearing from you. I'd, I'd love to speak with you later, too. Thank you. A few more people typing. Sort of takes a couple of minutes to. Margaret saying thank you. An interesting discussion. Working collaboratively together is often a challenge across all professions. Thanks. Absolutely, Margaret. And it's, um, you know, I think, you know, we sort of look at the structures in place and the systems in place and how they've been created and how those structures then reinforce ways of being, ways of working, ways of knowing with each other. And I know we're certainly doing a lot of work here to really 
you know, dismantle some of those silos in our, the ways that we work and think and, and learn, right? And so often when we do that, then that opportunity to, to come together and learn how to work together in different ways is, um, is, is, is fostered and supported for sure. Rehan is saying learning from other professionals has definitely been my favorite way of learning and also sharing my knowledge. Yeah, and I think that's it too. I can remember one of the participants was telling a story uh, when I was doing this research about um, something that she shared with a, a med student, but also I think there was a nurse and, and, and they'd never seen what she was telling them about. And just sort of that ability to share or, you know, some nurses saying, wow, like, you know, I can remember talking about, you know, having midwives come and sort of seeing unmedicated births um, is a big deal for some nurses who sometimes enter their practice after school and, and, and everything, and, and they've never seen an unmedicated birth before. It's sort of that idea of sitting on your hands and letting labor unfold on its own. And so, you know, what's being missed in that piece if, if we don't have opportunities to learn with each other. So yeah, it's great. And it's, and it's great, I think, to solidify our own practices too, right? Um, when you're teaching someone else, you're also, you know, seeing your own practice with new eyes. So that's really great too. Yeah, that's great. I think we're getting close to time, aren't we, Tanya? Yes, we are. Yeah. Any final questions or comments? And please feel free, if, if not here, please feel free to reach out, um, email or on Twitter. <laughs> um, I, I'd be happy to, to receive any of your comments or feedback. Yeah. Thank you so much.